What's going on, guys? My name's Jordan. I'm a technician at Hall Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And if you happen to be the owner of a Wagoneer S or a Dodge Charger Daytona, got some pretty exciting news. I'm sure you guys saw the thumbnail, you read the title, but I think you guys are going to like this. So since the day that these things rolled off the truck, um, you know, you've, you've seen it on the internet. They've had bricking issues. You go through a car wash, you run into the store, they leave you stranded. They're setting all kinds of crazy lights. Uh, they become immobile. Um, I've experienced this firsthand. I've been in one when it's happened. It's pretty inconvenient and it hasn't been a, hasn't been a good time. Um, but from day one, I've been in contact with one engineer in particular. Uh, this guy has been really good to me. Uh, he preferred to remain anonymous. Uh, and I completely understandable. Stellantis can be a little funny sometimes. Uh, but he gave me a little insider tip that the software will be releasing uh, sometime around midnight. So I drove up here, grabbed the cars, started messing with them because I wanted to see firsthand exactly what would happen uh, just to make sure we worked some kinks out. Uh, I've taken care of one already. We've been on a test drive. We beat the hell out of this thing just to make sure everything was going to be good. Um, and we're going to talk about this together. I'm going to show you guys what it takes to do the software update, tell you what you need to tell your dealership so we can get you in, we can get you fixed, so we can get you on the road so you can drive the car the way it deserves to be driven you know, especially all the hard-earned money that you're spending on these things. Before we get really rolling, though, I do want to say thank you to my dealership, Hall Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Virginia Beach, Virginia, for letting me come in in the middle of the night without calling the cops on me or setting the alarms off. Um, I'm sure they think I'm crazy, but I live for this stuff. I love working on these cars, and I love my job. This is the kind of stuff that keeps me up at night. I love reading over TSBs and wiring diagrams. It's just what I do. I love cars, so I just want to say thanks, guys. And if you guys like this kind of stuff, and you appreciate the fact that I wanted to drive up here at midnight, and show you how we're going to fix these cars, uh, hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. So let's get rolling. Now, fortunate enough for us, the RT here has decided to give us a show. I can show you exactly what's happening when we're having these breaking events. You know, we're getting crazy lights on the dash. Uh, you've seen it in the forums. Uh, the vehicle may also become immobile. You'll find that it's unable to shift, unable to drive. Uh, some instances, it may go in limp mode. It may uh, be reduced to 30 miles an hour. You may still maintain some momentum. Uh, but the majority of customers out here are finding if they come out, they try and start either one of these guys, and they just they won't do anything. Um, and it is frustrating. Like I said, I have been in one. I've been stuck at Publix. You know, I ran in for something, came back out five minutes later, car wouldn't start. Didn't make any sense. Um, it's, it's extremely disappointing. But it looks like Stellantis has done the right thing, and we're going to get all this resolved. So here's what's happening with this one. So as you guys can see here, the car is extremely unhappy. Um, it's getting all the lights that everybody likes to see. You know, we've got the lobster light. Uh, you know, we're missing the turtle. Power steering, servicing light brake. Uh, so it's doing its usual jazz uh, that we're seeing all over the internet, all over the forums. And like I said, on top of that, you know, you're also going to find that the shifter may be flashing. It'll become inoperable. You'll be not be able to shift. Uh, pretty annoying. Um, and this, the symptoms are pretty much the same, whether it be the chargers or the Wagoneer S. You know, you'll, you'll find these issues have been pretty prevalent since the, since the release of these. Now, there have been some temporary fixes. I'm sure you've seen the videos on YouTube. There are ways to get these things mobile, uh, whether it be letting it slip, uh, sit through a sleep cycle, the way the modules can calm down. Uh, I would say about 75% of the time that does work for us. After about 10 minutes of sitting, she'll chill out. You'll be able to hop in, drive it back around. Um, the other thing would be a battery disconnect where you get into the trunks of these, disconnect the negative terminal, let that sit for 30 seconds and reconnect it. Um, you know, that's been a temporary fix. And then what ends up happening is you guys bring them to the dealership here for us. Uh, we put our scan tools on them. We take a bunch of data. You know, we get scan reports and voltage logs, send all this stuff to Stellantis. Uh, every time this has been happening, you know, we've been sending it to our engineers. They've been building this massive case against the software. The software, from what I was told by my engineer, isn't quite the easiest thing that we thought to develop. It goes through several different phases of testing, trial and error. Then it goes, gets submitted to approval. Then it goes through this massive legal pro process in Auburn Hills. Uh, so it did take a little bit of time. All right, so let's get into the actual portion of the, of the flash. Um, so when we log into our service portal here, here's some of the things we're going to find. We're going to find a new TSB. I'm going to post this up on the screen so you guys can read it. Uh, but this is going to be TSB 08-022-25 revision B. Um, and this is going to be the whole host of software updates that's going to be for this vehicle. Um, as we go down and we scroll through the procedure, we're going to find it's not just as simple as hooking up a scan tool and performing a software update. There's going to be some steps that we take additionally. One of them being removing uh, your front compartment, the tub. We're going to get to that radiator fan. 
disconnect the fan so that way it doesn't create an excessive draw in the 12 volt system. And they've also got us coming in and removing a fuse back from the fuse panel so that we don't cause any damage to the shifter. Uh, as you can see over here in my topology, we've got a bunch of codes. I've also got a bunch of green lightning bolts here. Those indicate that there is a software update. So, woo, so we're gonna get kind of rolling. This is gonna be a quick overview of what it takes to get the software knocked out. Now I've already torn the frunk apart on this charger so that way I can get access down here to the connector to the radiator fan. And if you guys wanna reference one of my other videos on how to repair the hood latch, I'll show you how this entire tub system comes off. I've got that unplugged. I've got a good 50 amp charger supplied here so we can have good voltage while we're doing the software update. In the back, at least on the charger, we're gonna find our fuse box here. I'm gonna be able to access that fuse and remove it so that way we don't cause any damage to our electronic shifter. Once I get the fuse pulled out, we'll get the flashing and uh, hopefully everything's gonna go smooth. With my radiator fan disconnected and I have that fuse pulled out for the electronic shifter, I can go through and I'll start the process now and we'll just start flashing. Um, you know, it has a starting with uh, one module first and then we'll proceed down the list until everything's knocked out. And at this point, it's pretty much just gonna be a couple loading screens for us. Once we get each individual module updated, that's pretty much a wrap. We're gonna put your car back together. We'll make sure to reinstall the radiator fan connector. We'll that fuse back in the trunk. Um, <clears throat> we'll do a couple checks just to make sure nothing's weird going on. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be a wrap. And hopefully this is gonna resolve all the issues that everyone's seeing. Um, now, my engineer did tell me that this is the first of many software updates. While this issue may fix the bricking issues we're seeing, this might not fix something that we're calling super turtle mode. Uh, that's basically what I've been told by my engineer is the EV's version of limp mode. So some of these customers may experience a unintended acceleration event. More than likely, the car has seen a DTC, some kind of fault, and it's gone into a protection mode, uh, kind of like a limp mode on an ICE vehicle, and it's applying a slight amount of power to help get you safely off the road. That uh, can be kind of alarming. We didn't have the best explanation for that as technicians um, or you as the customer, but there is a, uh, like I said, a host of software updates. This isn't the only one that's coming. Again, I wish I could give you guys better information of when they were, but we have issues with passive entry, with the driver's seat, so at least on the chargers, um, and they're gonna resolve all this stuff for us. Now, I'd also like to show you guys this. All the software in the world probably wouldn't have fixed this vehicle. It ended up having an internal short of the 12 volt battery. This is the battery here. It is very small, it's an odd size. It's 300 cranking amps and it is an AGM battery. So I tested the battery. It did have an internal short, it did fail the test. So what we're gonna need to do again is when they come in for the software update, we still need to test your batteries to make sure that they are healthy. Um, before you guys come in screaming that you want batteries from the dealership, I wanna show you this. This is the Maximus battery tester. This thing, man, this is the bane of every Mopar technician's existence. So what we ended up doing when we test batteries is we hook it up to this and it uses Wi-Fi and it communicates to Auburn Hills and Stellantis approves and denies the batteries. These batteries have to test bad. That's the only way that I can replace one under warranty is if I get the code from this machine. So when you guys come in and you know you want a 12 volt battery, just know that we as technicians, we would love to put one in this, but it requires approval from Stellantis, not the dealership, not the tech. Stellantis has to approve the batteries. So just keep that in mind when you get frustrated with your technician and with your dealership, that there are hoops that we have to jump through with Stellantis to get things done. So here's what you guys are gonna do. I'd like you to contact your local dealership, be it the one you purchased the vehicle from or one you know, down the street if you're out of town. Give them your VIN number and ask them if there are any active RSUs. We'll schedule you for service, we'll get your vehicle in, and we'll start the process. There are a couple things to take into consideration here too. Um, so this software, what it's gonna require us to do is make sure that these codes that your vehicle may or may not have are applicable. Um, there's, we still need to test your 12 volt battery. The software isn't gonna resolve an issue if there is an internal short one of these batteries. So they need to be tested just to make sure they are healthy and then we'll perform the RSU. Uh, like I said, uh, the software is not gonna fix a bad battery, but it will fix some of these bricking issues that we're having. That's pretty much a wrap. So, you know, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you know someone who owns one of these cars, send them this video, you know, spread it all over the internet. The people who own these, you know, it's, it's the choice they made. You know, I personally like these vehicles. Uh, they don't deserve to suffer. So let's get their cars in, let's get them fixed. Let's make sure they're having a good time on the road and getting the most out of the money that they're spending. Um, you know, if you guys like this stuff, you know, please, you know, drop a comment. I absolutely love them. 
Uh, they're hilarious most of the time. I, again, I don't make the cars. I didn't design the cars. I just fix them. Um, so, you know, take that in consideration when you're dropping these comments down below. Um, you know, and hit subscribe, please. You know, I, I'd love to see my, uh, my stuff blow up. Um, it lets me know that people really enjoy watching this kind of stuff. So thanks again for watching, guys.